Lance, the you, motor RPM, still spins. RPM and speed, single speed, RPM and speed are going to be proportional the whole time. The needles are going to move okay, up and down. Proportional and actual numbers are going to be totally different. Put a double, put a, a, be a bezel, put the background on the, on the speedo to include RPM as well. Then you got RPMs, which is what he wants to see. And then your other gauge apps. Fight! <laughs> I say we take this and do a celebrity death. <laughs> so what we're debating right now is uh, Tim Allen's car. We're <laughs> building up the instrument cluster with Will. And we're talking about the center or one of the gauges being either RPM or amperage. What would you put in there? Do you want to see amperage? Do you want to see RPM of the motor? So, yes, absolutely. that is a great idea, Eddie B. So all of you drivers who actually want to see something that's actually valuable to you, go ahead and put RPMs. And then all of you other people that don't know crap about cars, go with him. <laughs> Tom, if I'm listening, please. <laughs> All right. So welcome back to Revolt Garage. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to Revolt Garage. Um, we're going to go through some of our projects we're working on this week. We have a couple deadlines coming up. We have races coming up. We have a bunch of good things on the plate. And uh, we'll start with you, Snow. I got to get my roll control installed. You know, most of us call it a line lock so I can do my burnouts in the burnout box. <laughs> Um, also, I'm going to go and uh, have a little adjustment done over at Accurate Alignment with our buddy James. He's going to set my pinion angle and make sure, you know, the truck is smooth and ready to run down the track. Yeah, a little bit of vibration, so yeah, yeah. that needs to be taken care of. Um, and then you got the bike to prep here pretty quick. Yep, our racing got cancelled in uh, in June. Why? <laughs> Rain, as usual. Uh, July's looking pretty good, though. It's going to be a scorcher, but we're going to do a, a shakedown in uh, July for that. You guys went to the auto museum. We too, did go to the auto museum on Friday. I wasn't there for that one. So no, you guys out of town. Drive my car. Yep, drove it right through the tunnel, right into the exhibit. As as yeah. people standing around looking at it, that was pretty cool. Um, pretty slick. They do curated talks in the museum uh, where they'll focus on one area and have you know experts in to, to talk about whatever it may be, whether it's you know the the land speed stuff or the motocross stuff or whatever it is. Uh, so if you get a chance to check out San Diego Auto Museum, definitely. You know, make your way down there. They're really cool. They're actually, yeah. uh, the little giant lives out there when race season isn't going. They have a nice air conditioned area. It's not tearing up shop space here. So thank you guys very much for taking mm -hmm. care of the car. Also, it's really nice for the public to see it. If you look at to actually enjoy that vehicle versus it sitting here in the shop. Yeah. So one of the people who run the San Diego Auto Museum is one of our buddies, Carlos Ruiz. And Carlos came out and he brought a pretty special vehicle that looks like it might be our next Revolt project. So if you want to see more about that, you can see it at Gas and Go with Snow. Check out the link up here or over here. Wherever, yeah, there. There. wherever, wherever Danny Wood puts it. <laughs> <laughs> Some more work on a vehicle is in, in that auto museum, which is the little giant. We're going to tear that thing out of the museum again, put the battery back in it and go reset a record, we hope. We're going for 360 miles an hour this year, which will bump up our current record of 354 to hopefully 360. Yeah. Which is, that doesn't sound like a lot, but even one mile an hour at that speed is considered yeah. tremendous. We're yeah. hoping for 360, but anything over 354, we're gonna be very happy with. Oh yeah, we got a couple tricks up our sleeve. A couple yeah. things we didn't we didn't utilize last time that, that we can we can pull out of the bag this time. We were just trying to set a record last time. Yeah. Here we're yeah. trying to beat our own and set a new one, so we have a little yeah. bit more playroom. Prove what the car can really do, yeah. yeah we yeah, got a couple probably. other vehicles going out there. We have your motorcycle going out. Mm. Um, also, something called the Turbinator 2. I don't know if you guys know about that vehicle. It is the fastest wheel-driven car on the planet. Wheel-driven. Yeah. 503 miles an 503. hour. 503. Never certified, but that was its peak speed. Yeah, yeah. 500. They're trying to come back with a certified record of 500 this year. Yeah. So. And the reason they couldn't certify their record was? Rain. Rain. <laughs> they ran a pass at 503 miles an hour. The next day, they had to do their secondary backup pass, and it did not happen because of the rain. They got some really good photos of the Beautiful thing. Beautiful photos. But uh, photos yeah. don't mean anything if you're not doing over 500 miles an hour. This is um, true so they're going to bump up that record. I'm pretty sure that car is going to scream down the stall. It is the most amazing and iconic vehicle to see at Bonneville. Oh. Uh, that thing is just nuts. You see the car and you hear, the sound is coming from 500 feet behind it. Yeah. It's that fast. It's almost outrunning the sound. It's, it's going airliner speed. Yeah. Man, he's moving. Holy smoly. Oh, he went further, all right. 
Wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Five, five and a half thousand horsepower gets you over 500 miles an hour. So they got a name. Little Giant's got a name. This bike doesn't have a name. We're gonna need a name. We're gonna need a name, I feel yeah. like. I, I've i been calling it the missile, but that's not really a, a name. So if someone can come up with something, you know, put it in the comments, because we've been scratching our heads and not coming up with something cool, so. Yeah, we got, we got what, Tesla Mino, we got the Dock. We got Dock, we have the Hillbilly Deluxe. Deluxe. We have the yeah. Bonneville Little Giant, we got the Terminator. And we've just been calling this the bike, so. Uh, we Maybe it's the else. bike, but if you can come up with something better, let us know. Yeah, hit it up in the comments. We'd love to see what you guys come up with. Mm. Yeah. Oh, you know what? I want to give a little shout out. Hey. Yeah. So we met a gentleman from Simple Green, really cool guy, Fred Waterfall. So Fred came over and he brought us some products and you know, we've used Simple Green all the time. So now it's even great. You know, better to have, you know, Simple Green as a sponsor. We got two flavors. We got lemon and green. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this stuff works really darn good. Uh, we've been using it here for years, and if your kids get into it, it's not the end of the world. So, hey, thank you, okay. Simple Green, so much for helping us out and give us some, giving us some products, and we're using them on everything around here. I think you started brushing your teeth with it, didn't you? Oh, yeah. Okay. No, you use it right in the end. Anything. How do you spell that? Anything. <laughs> anything. How do you spell that? All right. So, um, let's go check out the current projects in the shop and see you, uh, what's there to talk about. All right. So the list we have to finish this car up, or at least to get the wheels turning, is a pretty short list as it goes. Um, the big one is we've got a, a prototype contact box that we're building going in this. That's going to go over in this corner under here. It's kind of a do-it-all box. It's going to have all the, the accessory contactors, main contactors, and fuse, and everything's going to be um, internal to that. So we're pretty excited to get it going, but it's a lot of work. And for those people that haven't built EVs, that's basically the on and off switch for mm -hmm. everything in the car. High voltage. Uh, your heater, your your air conditioning, your batteries, all that runs to this box. It's basically a bunch of relays, and our computers tell those relays to either turn on, turn off. Uh, in emergencies, they'll shut everything down too for safety reasons to disable all the high voltage in the vehicle. Yeah. And <laughs> it's been fun working on such an, like a, an old car too, because there's a lot of stuff that you don't usually get, like access to under the dash. The suicide doors are fantastic. You can get to stuff like on the firewall, super easy. Every car should be like this. If you're listening, General Motors, every car should have to use doors again. <laughs> on from that, we've got the battery boxes. That's obviously the other big thing that's missing right now. Um, they're in powder coat. They're going to come back and get finished. We're going to assemble them without any batteries in them, fit every single one in the car, mount it securely, pull them all back out again, and then put the batteries in and go for the final install. That sounds like a long way to do it, but once those batteries in, you can't cut, you can't grind, you can't weld, nothing. So if you get one chip in one of those battery boxes where it shouldn't be, you can short a cell, you'd be chasing battery management issues for a long time. So that's the way that's gonna go. Uh, I gotta pin up. <laughs> uh, all my communication for the BMSs. We got one here, one in the, in the passenger seat. We got one up front behind egg bar here. That's small stuff. We got to plumb the motor. That's easy enough. We got fittings back here. We'll mount the reservoir and a pump. Safety disconnect in the rear of the car. So all of this, it all looks real complicated and messy right now, uh, but all this is cut to length already for that back panel that you've seen. So once that back panel goes back in, everything here will plug in and clip up all, all nice and it'll be, be just beautiful. How beautiful? Beautiful. One, one more time. <laughs> beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. He's Italian now. <laughs> Delicious. Really, we're getting down to the, to the nitty gritty. Um, it's getting real close. I think within two or three weeks, this thing should be on the, on the final stretch. I know. We're on the final stretch now. <laughs> two or three weeks, you better be rolling. <laughs> yes. Last 10% takes 90% okay. of the time, but yep. uh, we'll get through it just like we get through any other project. You know, we're, we're not new to deadlines here, and this is just one of those deadlines that we set ourselves to make sure this car is back in Tim Allen's yeah. hands, and he could go do burnouts and drive this thing just like he, he likes to drive, which is extremely fast. Extremely fast. We also got to put a radiator in it, because uh, without it, you can't cool the McRody, you can't cool the inverter, nothing. Um, so we're hanging it in there a little bit temporary before the body guys come in and, and mount it for, uh, for permanent. Uh, but we just got to cut off a couple tabs, redrill a couple things. It's pretty, pretty minor stuff. If anybody else actually needs, you know, help or assistance on finding a shop or whatever to do your conversions, uh, 
Legacy EV. They uh, have a network of authorized installers. So notice we are authorized installers. All right, so apart from all of this stuff you've seen with the, uh, the major projects, we're still cranking out motors like there's no tomorrow, so snow's been real busy. We just shipped out seven, seven motors. Seven, seven motors away. Seven <laughs> to the machine. Did they all fit in that truck? Actually, they all fit in the back of the Tesla Mino, so we call it the Octomino now, because it had technically eight Tesla eight motors, motors in it. That's over 4,500 horsepower <laughs> in one Tesla. There you go. So yeah, we took them over to the machines this morning. They'll get back to us in about a week or so, and you will start assembling motors like right. crazy, because we, we cannot keep yeah. up with orders. But anyway, that's the update from the Revolt Garage. Check us out real soon. Leave your comments down below. Like, subscribe, leave some bad comments. Talk about the hot rod behind me, and uh, we'll go from there. Don't forget, if you have a great name for the bike, we want to see it. Delicious.